Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Aren't you uh, getting dressed this morning, darling? I am dressed. As dressed as I'm going to get. Is uh, this the latest style? Don't you like it? Stunning. Your good brown sweater over your pink pajamas. <laughs> Direct from Paris. But it's for a very good reason. Must be. Mom is coming over. We're going to put shelf paper in all the closets. And on all the shelves. The things you girls think up to amuse yourselves. We didn't think this up. Everybody does it. You can't have shelves without shelf paper. You pass me the coffee, darling. Why not? No reason why not. Here it is. I don't mean why not the coffee. I mean why not the shelves without the shelf paper. It just isn't done. The shelves get all dirty. Doesn't the paper? You can change the paper, silly, but you can't change the shelves. Oh, very clever. It's the sort of thing a mother hands down to her daughter. <laughs> That's Mama now. Tell her to come right over. I'll lend her a pair of my pajamas. You've got no respect for my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mama. Oh, Julia. Good morning. So early I thought it'd be Mama. When'd you get back? Today? Well, Julia, I'm awfully busy with shelf paper today. I, I suppose I could do it tomorrow, but I'd planned to... Oh, no, Julia, I don't want to borrow one of your maids, really. It's one of the things I... I sort of like to do myself. You mean you like Mama to do it myself? What was that, Julia? But you've already given us a wedding present. Oh, we couldn't accept anything else. The car is plenty, really. You're much too generous. We... What? No, we haven't bought any flat silver yet, but... Oh, Julia, I, I don't know what to say. I... Say thank you. You made an appointment for today? Antoine and Pierre's. Fine, I'll be there. Oh, give my love to Hartley. Goodbye. That was Julia. You don't say. She wants to buy me some black, flat silver today. Now my shelves will have to wait. You don't seem to be very happy about the flat silver. I am. It's wonderful of Julia. We need it, don't we? She's going to get me a whole set, aren't you, please? It's a little embarrassing. She's giving us so much. She's already given us the car. I told her that, and she said, that little old second-hand car, she seemed really glad to get rid of it, you know. I know. But even so, it makes me feel like a poor relative. Me too. But in this case, it's all right, because we're not really, except by comparison. I suppose you're right. I'm just being stuffy. I like you stuffy. <laughs> Shows you're nice. <laughs> Darling, don't look so worried about it. You know, I like Julia. I like Hartley, too not quite as impressive as she is. Maybe that's because he's your brother. That's a nice thing to say. Or maybe it's because of his gallbladder. <laughs> I, I'll tell him. Don't you dare! <laughs> Call me when you get through with Julia. Or better still, drop in at the office since you'll be downtown and I'll buy you your lunch. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Then I'll come right home or I'll never get to paper the shelves. <laughs> What's so funny? You are. Me? And wonderful. Of course, uh, I'm wonderful, too. You? I married the one woman in the world who would rather paper her shelves than choose her silver. Oh. Is, is Mrs. Hartley Norton here? Oh, yes. Mrs. Hartley Norton is in booth three. If it's about the samples for her draperies, you may go right in. No, I, I'm not about the samples. I mean, uh, I'm Mrs. David Norton, her sister-in-law. Oh, yes, Mrs. Norton. She's expecting you, too. Booth three, can you find your way? Oh, certainly. Thank you. It's on the right. Oh, excuse me. Booth three. Oh, Julia, hello. Claudia, darling, hello. Am I early? I'll be out from under in a minute. What's 
the matter? You look like you've seen something terrible. I walked into the next booth by mistake, and I saw two eyes staring out of a sheet with a lot of ground or something around them. Did I imagine it, Julia? <laughs> no, my lamb. That's a mud pack. What on earth for? For wrinkles. You don't have to worry about them yet. Oh. But it looks so messy. It washes off. Is it expensive? Fifteen dollars. Fifty? Just for mud? I'd rather have wrinkles. Oh, I think I must be dry by now. You want me to feel? It's all right. It's been twenty minutes. How can you stand sitting under one of those things? What's that? I can't hear you. I said I couldn't stand sitting under one of those things. Oh, if you want to make an appointment, just ask Gertrude. She'll take good care of you. I don't want to make an appointment. This is the best place in town. Never go anywhere else. I don't go anywhere else. I mean, I like to do my... Uh, oh, Whenever I have my hair set, I come out looking like somebody else. Well, uh, try or not, I'm coming out. I can't stand this noise another minute. Whew. Hmm, that's a relief. Those machines are simply exhausting. Oh, oh, Gertrude, you're here. Uh, call Pierre, would you? He asked me to tell you he was sorry, but he had to go to the towers to do Lady Radcliffe's hair. Oh. I'll comb it out for you. Good. I've got to be rushing along. I'm late already. Oh, but it's not quite dry, Mrs. Norton. No matter. Comb it out. Oh, Gertrude, this is my sister-in-law, Mrs. David Norton. From now on, she's going to be coming down here to have her hair done, and I want you to take good care of her. Oh, no, really, I... I... Oh, she's got lovely hair. I think we can do a lot with her. Have you ever worn it out? Well, David doesn't like it up. He doesn't like my ears to show. Let me see your ears. There's nothing the matter with your ears. They're nice and close to your head. They are? Well. Men always fight against something new. You let Gertrude put your hair up. David will like it. Well, I'm not so sure. I... And there, Mrs. Norton, how does that look? It's very nice today, Gertrude. Now, just hand me my coat, would you? Here it is. Oh, thanks. Well, now, let me see. It's a quarter to 12. At 12.30, I must be at that luncheon... That gives us just enough time, Claudia. What shall I tell the draperies woman if she comes? Oh, yes. Well, tell her I'm sorry. She was late and that I couldn't wait for her. I'll tell her. And I hope you, too, Mrs. Norton, will come in soon. You, you, you mean me? She means you. She will. So quiet here. wonder where they get their carpeting. There's the silver counter over there. Monsieur Aubert has the patterns ready for me. Ah, uh, Madame Norton, I was expecting you. This is Mrs. David Norton, Monsieur Aubert. I spoke to you about the patterns for her silver. Good afternoon, Mr. Aubert. Enchanté. Delighted, Madame Norton. Uh, step right over here, if you please. I have the samples on the counter. Here they are, Claudia. Oh, they're lovely. All three of them. Now, you don't have to choose one if you don't like them. Oh, I do. They're sterling and they will last you a lifetime. Well, they'll have to. We'll never get another. What time have you, Monsieur Robert? Uh, it's almost 12 o'clock. Oh, you'll excuse me a moment, Claudia. I want to make a phone call. Go right ahead, I'll please. just be a moment. Oh, look at those stunning clips. Remind me to ask about them, Monsieur Robert. Oui? You like the silver patterns, Madame Norton? Oh, yes, I like them very much. Your sister-in-law, she has exquisite taste. Truly elegant. I, I won't be able to choose which one to choose. But I, I think I like the plainest one best. Ah, yes. The simplest is always the best taste. But the others, they are simple, too, in their own way. I think I like this one. Looks like a pie crust. We call it the Doric pattern. <laughs> but uh, the pie crust is better. My husband likes simple things, too. He has excellent taste. Uh, this pattern, madame, it will go with everything. Oh, we haven't got everything to go with it, but it can stand on its own feet. Oh, look at those salt cellars. Aren't they adorable? Uh, you would like to see them? Oh, thank you. No, salt cellars is something we have plenty of. Is that a cake knife next to it? That is right, a cake knife. Oh, that's lovely. I love that pattern. But Swedish. It is Danish. We have just received a whole set from Copenhagen. You have? Can I look at it? I'll show you a fork I have right here. Ah, there you are. Oh, this would be beautiful with monograms and salt cellars, wouldn't it? And very individual. We have only this one set. Did Mrs. Norton see it? It was not in when she came. And I like it by far the best. By far. But I, I wonder if she'd be offended if I chose it. Maybe I'd better not. I'd well, my dear, have you made up your mind? It's quite a problem, Julia. What is this fork? Oh, wait, that's just something Mr. Aubert was showing me. Julia, I, I think I'll take the one that looks like a pie crust. But I thought you said the other fork was of the pattern. Uh, no, the pie crust is the one I'd like, the one you chose, Julia. 
Monsieur Aubert, you didn't show me this other pattern. Well, I only received it this morning. Have you got the whole set? Eighteen of everything. It's very handsome. So simple. Do you like it best, too? By far the best. It's your choice, isn't it? Well, I... I... I, I do like the pie crust one that you chose. You're very sweet, my dear. You won't hurt my feelings at all by taking this new set. But really, Julia, it... No ifs about it. If I'd seen it, I'd have chosen it, too. Then you don't mind about the others. <laughs> On the contrary, I'm delighted to find you have such good taste. And that you'd sacrifice silver to feelings, my lamb. Feelings last a lifetime, too, Julia. In that case, David should be a very happy man. Well, do you want to pick out the monogram now? Well, I'd rather show the silver to David first. If I could take a sample or, or a picture with me. After all, he's going to eat half of it, too, you know. You're sure it's not best for you to decide by yourself? Husbands don't like to be bothered with this sort of thing, generally. David does. So do most husbands, I think. As long as their wives want to bother them. And don't think it's a bother to, if you see what I mean. I do. Maybe you're right. You know, for someone who's had so little experience, you've got a great deal of wisdom, my lamb. I wish I'd had it when I got married. It's not wisdom, Julia. It's being married to David. Maybe it's Claudia being married to David. So you take your time about the monograms and the silver. Monsieur Robert will be here when you've decided. I'll hold the set for you, Madame Norton. You may take the fork with you. Madame Hartley Norton is uh, well known to us here. Thank you. Goodbye, Monsieur Robert. I'll be in next week about those clips. Au revoir, madame. Now, do you think you'd like to come along to this luncheon with me? It's for the orchestra. I'm on the board. I'd love to, Julia, but I, I can't. Oh? I've got something very important to do this afternoon. Really? The luncheon would set me late, and I wouldn't have time. You see, I have to change my clothes first. Whatever it is, it sounds very exciting. Oh, it's just something I've been planning for a few days now. In a way, I guess it is a little exciting. It's sort of a... sort of a symbol. Why, Claudia, <laughs> you've got me palpitating. <laughs> now, what is it you're rushing off to do? I thought I told you. <laughs> no, you didn't tell me about anything so important. I've got to paper my shelves, Julia. They should have been done days ago. Oh. Now, I thought at least you had a luncheon date with the mayor. Luncheon date with the mayor? Heavens no. What would I be lunching with the mayor for? I'm having lunch with David. Claudia, you're a funny child. Shelves before silver, marriage before monograms. But you run along. And stay sweet. Give my love to that important man. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. There are some little things you can do for folks that make a hit out of all proportion to the money they cost. When the laundress or cleaning woman has finished a tiresome chore and you offer her an ice-cold Coke, she's ready to bless you for the thoughtful attention. The price of Coca-Cola is still only five cents. Yes, still five cents for the self-same quality that Coca-Cola has brought you through the years. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>